Simon forgot something? Um, no, I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> That's why I came back. <laughs>
Yeah, so we just uh, took a look at the footage and tried to figure out what happened and what was going on. Mm -hmm. So what happened and what worked very well most of the time and for both of us was just to bind, grab the sword hand, mm -hmm. pull the other one to his inside mm -hmm. and then attack him with the sword from the outside. So that worked. Interesting. Yeah. Pretty standard operating procedure. Yeah, <laughs> and it's also it's in Anonymo, I think, that technique. And you said you found it also within the dagger um, techniques. Yeah, because it's like the the binding on the sword, taking over with your blade or your offhand weapon, and then going to the outside is is mm. fairly universal in a bunch of techniques, and also the dagger section of Maroto. The other thing that worked very well, but that only you did, because I'm not capable of doing it, is uh, the disarm. Mm -hmm. That you did, I think, at least twice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, w where did you get that from? Probably from Fiora, okay. but it's also in, in Marotto, in the dagger section. Mm -hmm. And it's basically... This is not the Bolognese type sword, just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, if, yeah. if you've got it, it's basically taking the wrist on the inside mm -hmm. and turning it downwards. Yeah. And so you're using the blade as leverage to turn it outside of the hand where the grip is the weakest. You've got to get it on the inside, but as long as you've got like the, the geometry of your arm in between the other arm and the blade, you can actually turn it mm. over quite easily. Yeah, sure. And that one actually works well with sparring gloves as well, because okay. you don't have to grip it that well, mm -hmm. you just have to get in the right position. But the, the disadvantage of this and why I wouldn't necessarily do it in, in regular speed sparring uh, is because if your hands get, if your fingers get trapped inside the guard mm -hmm. and you turn them over then they can, they can, they get can break hurt something fairly can. easily. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, we had a few throws from you, from yourself. Yeah, so that I think were the three uh, grappling style type things that uh, that happened during during the sparring, mm -hmm. and since that was our goal, we kind of succeeded. Yeah. <laughs> Almost no grappling happened during the dagger section, which is it's also I think very uncommon because most people that do um, Deutsche Schule uh, associate the dagger with a weapon that is almost, I don't know, 80% grappling? Yeah, basically our dagger is more cut and thrust centric and mm -hmm. you can use it pretty much like a smaller, more nimble sword. Yeah. And I think most of the Bolognese sword techniques actually work just in a far closer range and far quicker tempo. Um, and it's in contrast to the like earlier um, rundle dagger, which are mostly thrust centric, mm -hmm. and so you don't need to worry about your measure that much, yeah. and can really get in closer and do some grappling techniques uh, without having to worry about getting cut in the hands or mm -hmm. being kept at distance with with a blow. I got very hesitant when we were really standing there because. Um, I just had the feeling, as soon as I approach, it is almost impossible for me to get close to you without getting hit somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I hesitated a lot. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it doesn't, grappling doesn't work if you hesitate. <laughs> Martial arts don't work if you hesitate, yeah. Um, yeah, but then I, I thought, okay, maybe I can, uh, I can do some kicks. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, when I kick, uh, I have more range. But I decided not to do that because I was afraid that you would simply get my leg mm -hmm. and also the, our daggers, our sparring daggers are, I mean they are blunt obviously mm. but uh, they are pretty hard, they don't bend that much and so if I get it like on my... Oh, yeah, I was like no, that. no let's not do that today <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe that would be something that works uh, and um. a close range weapon to throw some kicks Actually, I uh, before we tried this, I would have said no, mm -hmm. um, but I think you could have maybe landed some. Okay. Um, but st it's still a risky move because if I like get you on the inside mm -hmm. of the leg or something. I tried to to do some kicks and um, 
some box like when we were in grappling distance because mm -hmm. I just didn't know what else to do to defend myself. Um, do you? F I mean, I, I emphasized them with silly sounds during the sparring, but um, they were very controlled. Do you think they would make a difference in that moment, or is it just? Mm? Well, they they would make more of a difference, obviously, in a real fight if I didn't have the mask on, and they would probably disorient me, and at the very least. But yeah, I, I couldn't really tell mm -hmm. because. With the mask on, it's it's only an opportunity to take a hand or to get a better position mm -hmm. while you're occupied with throwing a punch. Yeah. And especially if you're throwing a kick and we're already like in a, in a bind, so to speak, mm -hmm. in um, then it just gives me more leverage, and you're just oh, opening okay. yourself up because um, you're standing on one leg for. Okay, yeah. A second That's or something. True. I'm curious to uh, to try this out a bit more, maybe next time. Yeah, definitely. With less less gear. <laughs> With less gear? <laughs> sure. Oh my God, I think if somebody is going. Just, just a. With just a ma mouth guard. Just a mouth guard and. Okay. But, uh, okay, well we have to be careful about this yeah, because I yeah. think I think somebody's going to shame us because this is the second sparring video I post on this channel. But we do not have complete gear. I, I, I understand that some people might find it strange or even um, I think dangerous. Attitudes are getting a bit more relaxed on that. Yeah. I know like a couple okay. of years ago it was a big no no in the community, but mm. if it's experienced fences and you're on a similar level and you know your training partner well. Yeah. It's obviously yeah. there's always a hazard, but Mm -hmm. Even with the fencing jackets, there, there can be a freak accident. Yeah, um, I mean, and just so you know, uh, we know each other, we've known each other for a very long time, we trained together for a very long time, and as I said, the sparring was um, very controlled. Also, we switched roles, like in the first mm -hmm. round, uh, I tried to be more... Um, I, I was the agentum. I was yeah, the kind of, so, so you could try out your... No, no, it's the other way around. I, I was the agent in the second round. And okay, but anyways, we, we, <laughs> yeah. we were constantly communicating about uh, about the speed, about what to try out next. So, um, yeah, it was a, a controlled sparring. Closing thoughts. Is that a word? I think so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now it is. <laughs> what I'd be interested in is: uh, Do you implement grappling into your training? Do you allow it in sparring? Do you implement kicks, uh, throws and punches? Are they allowed in sparring? How do you handle that? And um, let's let's leave it at that yeah. for now. If anyone's got suggestions to try grappling in sparring and make it more safe, that would be awesome. So we're done. Um, I'm thinking of uh, any kind of saying goodbye stuff. But I think the best way to say goodbye today is to just go to the camera and to show you who's here <laughs> because he's such a cute guy look at this one